Hi, welcome back. Uh, if you've made it this far through our journey, you know that this is the last of my four-part series on politics. Thank you for participating so far in this conversation. Our last piece of the puzzle today uh, focuses on how we're to carry ourselves when it comes to those that we're influencing. Uh, primarily, I'm speaking of our children, uh, nieces, nephews, grandkids, students if you're a teacher or a Sunday school teacher or a youth leader, uh, but this could also apply to co-workers, neighbors, family members, uh, anyone that you feel like you have influence over. How are we to function as believers when we're in their presence, especially when it comes to politics? But first I need to point out that tomorrow is election day. Make sure you go out there and vote if you didn't do early voting, because in two days time we will know who will be President of the United States for the next four years, and we'll know who walks away with the silver medal, a pat on the back, and an attaboy. Uh, we, of course, will uh, have a nation that's roughly half of them disappointed and rushing out to buy their Don't Blame For Me, I Voted For The Other Guy bumper stickers. Uh, but in two days' time, either way, we will know. I have several common themes that hopefully have made their way throughout this whole series. There are Christians on both sides of political discussions, and there are some Christians on neither side. Christians have a variety of feelings about politics and feel that God has led them to these various conclusions. Therefore, we must respect the diversity of thought that exists among believers and even non-believers or uh, those of other religions that we live with uh, in this country. We should carry ourselves as Christ carried himself. And as Christians, we know that our true allegiance lies not with any politician or with any political party, but with Jesus. I've borrowed a set of four principles to help us remember some of these themes. Number one, feel free to disagree with others, but don't take cheap shots, don't label, don't demonize, don't besmirch anyone's good name, don't assume the worst of others and model that same behavior for those who might be influenced by you. Number two, assume that you may have something to learn from others, that you may be wrong on some things, and perhaps that no one need be right 100% of the time to be a true follower of Jesus. Number three, don't be quick to take offense when you feel provoked. Ask, rather, the good and wise God to gift you with patience and to see that reasoned discussion with other Christians is not compromising the gospel, but is a way of living out the gospel. And finally, number four, work to preserve the good name of your opponents, even as you disagree with them. Be charitable, avoid slander, and promote the good name of others. Now, in addition to these guidelines, I have five kind of closing statements that relate to directly how we should speak to those under our influence. The first thing we should remember is to teach them about the political process and the system of politics that we practice. Educating our young people on these things is essential. Tell them about the different branches of government, the checks and balances put into place by our founding fathers. Tell them what it means to be a democracy and compare that to other political systems. Talk about what it takes to run a campaign and relate it to things on their level like student council perhaps. Talk about the popular vote and the electoral vote and when it is age appropriate once they get into um, multiple levels of thinking be sure to introduce them to healthy skepticism Discuss the role that exaggerations, half-truths, and potentially empty promises play in the political race. Learning about politics is essential, but it shouldn't be a chore. Help your kids get excited about it by presenting things creatively, and maybe even ask their classroom teachers what instructions they receive at school. The second thing I would recommend is to teach kindness and fairness about the opposing side. Model good Christian behavior, as I mentioned earlier, being careful not to belittle or demonize those that you disagree with. Be sure to let 
your young people know that it's okay to disagree and that this is a founding principle of our country's freedom. But teach them how to disagree well, how to disagree fairly and compassionately with others. Have healthy discussions about the issues. Talk about what constitutes an important issue and why. Talk about the ways that us common non-politician folks can get involved in the process. What it means to be an activist. How we can write our senators and congressmen. And how we can even protest in a healthy way if need be. Teach your kids about donating to charities and ways in which we can get involved in our communities. Let the political discussion lead to a talk about how we can actively carry out the things that we feel strongly about, rather than just expecting politicians to, to take care of things for us. And finally, as believers, it is our duty to teach young people about the separation of church and state. Not only that religion should stay out of the political conversation as much as possible, but that the church may have a different goal than that of the politicians. What is our responsibility as a nation, and what is our responsibility as the church? These are important questions to address with your children. Teach them that God has called the church to be the light of the world, to care for the least of these, to build up communities, to honor the image of God that is found in every human being on the planet. We should be active in politics, but more importantly, we should be active in the church. Now, if you want to rewind all of that and write it down, that would be swell. I would feel so great. Uh, I have enjoyed this discussion, truly, and I hope you have too. Get out there and vote if you haven't already, and may the one with the most votes win. Congratulations, Democrats! Barack Obama won! Four more years! Four more years! Four more years! Congratulations, Republicans! Mitt Romney won! No Obama! No Obama! No Obama! Congratulations, everyone! Romney and Obama agreed to share the presidency! Obama gets primary custody, Romney gets weekends and holidays. Hooray for Barrett Obamney! Congratulations, Big Bird! Your Kickstarter online campaign for a write-in vote was successful. And I think we can all agree that Elmo will make a fine vice president, though most of us expected you to go with Mr. Snuffleupagus. Congratulations, Martians! Chlorvac the Yoggle obliterated Washington and took over the planet. I think I speak for all of us when I say, PLEASE DON'T KILL US! HAVE MERCY!